Presented by Caltech. I think that it's really time for plain speak. I lived in a different world at a different time. And my life was defined by breaking down barriers. That's not who you are. You're defined and your lives as researchers are defined by seizing opportunity. That's really what this is all about. Seizing opportunity. The California Alliance is a collaboration among UC Berkeley, UCLA, Stanford, and Caltech. These are four institutions that are very prominent in educating uh, scientists and engineers to go on to occupy faculty positions at many institutions all over the country and all over the world. The focus of this collaboration is to make sure that the underrepresented minority students who come here to our institutions for PhD studies are encouraged to seek these important leadership and faculty positions and are successful in doing so. The California Alliance is quite unique, uh, uh, partly because of the uh, institutions that are involved and partly because of the nature of the program to look at individuals who are more advanced who are getting ready to enter the workforce and really giving them all the tools and opportunities for them to be able to get placed in good jobs where they can also be mentors themselves for other students that are coming up the pipeline. Part of the goals of the Alliance is to ensure that our students and our postdocs have the opportunity to meet individuals at other campuses who have complementary research interests, to share ideas, to have conversations uh, from which uh, new research projects can bloom. Particularly for underrepresented students, the sense of arrival, the sense of belonging, the sense of, you know, I'm here because I've worked hard and I deserve to be and people really care about what I have to say, that's a really critical moment and we're trying to lower the barriers for students to experience that. I think the most amazing part about this program is the focus on pushing minorities through this leaky pipeline into a tenure track positions. Too often and for too long, uh, those white lab coats have been filled with white males. A priori, if we are not attractive and if we are not attracting people from all backgrounds, from all perspectives, from all experiences, we will not be attracting the best people. For faculty in my field or any field, I'm really curious when you have a number of different research questions, how do you pick which ones you're going to pursue or which ones will make the biggest impact in the world? How, as I look forward in my career, do I think about having and developing a world-class research program and also trying to be a world-class mother and wife and member of a family? How do you do it? How do I get to where you are? Part of it is really creating a network of opportunities that not only the uh, graduate students benefit from, but the faculty do too. Trying to make sure that faculty, as mentors, become much more comfortable with students from many different backgrounds and understanding of their circumstances and are able to reach across those boundaries when necessary and make sure that everybody has kind of the same shot. Mentorship goes both ways in that uh, we can help other people uh, establish their careers, but at the same time they can uh, enable us to gain experiences that uh, enrich our careers as well. Exploring that great unknown together is part of that kind of what I saw called research intimacy that develops between the research advisor, the, the mentor, and the mentee, and it's, it's a wonderful adventure. I felt like my mentors brought out something in me that I didn't know was there before. Um, having somebody believe in you and don't necessarily believe in yourself is a tremendous advantage for success. I think it's a fantastic program for really trying to find the best people and getting them connected up and helping them go off and you know have careers in science and engineering and mathematics uh, and you know it's such a tricky uh, thing to learn what you need to do to be successful. So we have a mentor matching program and the question is why would you want to spend just a week or even a few days visiting another laboratory and part of it again is the notion of networking so not only is it a matter of acquiring new knowledge or new methodologies, but it's also about making connections that may pay off in the long run. Part of that process is to actually experience things um, in, in, in real life and 
one of those experiences can be a student actually visiting another laboratory or a company to get a first-hand view of how things actually work there or to add to their skill set. I applied to be matched with this uh, professor at Stanford, Dr. Shamir Kashru. Uh, he's a string theorist over there, and I'm really excited to work with him since we have similar research interests. So I hope um, to go visit them, um, hopefully give a seminar, and I'll just go there, try to impress them with my research. You always are sort of looking to try and build that interaction. You know they're going to be here for a short time. You try and introduce them to what's going on across the group. I think it's a great opportunity not only to visit the research group uh, and learn about the faculty member that you might be working with or the other postdocs and students, but also to find out a little about the institution. You know, one of the great things about uh, the world is that everybody does things a little bit differently. I know that there's a lot of other approaches out there and there's also a lot of other people who are thinking hard about the same issues that I'm working on. and so. Getting to visit UCLA will, I think, be a great opportunity to expand the scope of what I'm aware of and also to communicate my research. From the standpoint of my research group, I think that we have a very diverse uh, uh, environment uh, culturally uh, as well as scientifically, and so students will be exposed to a broad range of opinions about uh, research and how to tackle problems. While a lot of us are just students right now, we're all geared toward faculty positions and maybe in a few years we'll all be colleagues. I think there are lots of great ways to build research connections. Certainly workshops like this are one of those ways because you meet people who are doing something you didn't know about before and you can sort of find out and follow up on that. If you want to become part of the California Alliance, I think it would be very helpful because they have different panel discussions that talk about postdoc fellowships, postdoc positions, how to deal with that. Also, they have uh, very good information about uh, how to become a faculty member, uh, all the steps that you need to take in order to be a competitive researcher. You have the chance to experience the power of community. Not only the community in your department, the, commu the community on your campus, but also the community within this room, the AGAP community. I participated in the AGAP retreat in Stanford last year, which I really enjoyed. And what was wonderful is the number of faculty that were present there just to provide support and network with. The ratio was uh, incredible. And not just that, but it was fun to meet other colleagues who are also minorities, but who are also high achieving and you know nerdy in some sense, just like me. So. It was kind of nice to have like a whole a room full when sometimes you feel like the only one. In addition to uh, the pleasure of seeing these wonderful students and how this alliance is affecting their lives, the, the joy of working with colleagues uh, at, at the other institutions and, and finding commonalities and learning from them has been a, a tremendous experience for all of us, I think. Mm -hmm.